Howdy folks and welcome to Suburban Biology. My name is Kit. I am your humble host. I'm working on renovating my rear porch. What we're going to focus on in this video is repairing this edge of my concrete slab. But along this area there's a big crack system that came about from an exposed rebar here and over here there's a piece. Sometimes you can tell more from the sound it makes than you can from looking at it. So we're going to do what's called sounding. I'm going to slide my hammer around. So solid, not solid, solid, not solid, solid, not so much solid, and then here, it's all solid. So I think when they built my house, they had the B team pour this corner of the slab. Anything that sounds that hollow needs to go. One might argue that anything that sounds that hollow is already gone. So you'll notice here that I started off the demolition with a handheld sledgehammer. You always want to start with a handheld tool. You don't want to go right to power tools uh, because you want to know exactly what you're working with before you get out the big guns, so to speak. So these little blue chisels you see here are called cold chisels. You can pick those up at home improvement stores. So I really defined the borders of exactly where the rebar was using just a handheld hammer and some cold chisels. And then once I had a real good sense of exactly what I was working with and where the rebar was, uh, then you see me switch over to the hammer drill with a chisel bit on it. But if you open up with a hammer drill, you may get into trouble and get deeper than you intended. Uh, it's real easy to remove the concrete. It's a little harder to put it back. All right. So now I got most of the weakened concrete out of the area. I've exposed the rebar. There's some obvious rust on it, but you can hear the sound now. Pretty solid. The right way to do this is still get the rust off in any way you can. A lot of people will use a wire brush wheel. I've seen people do an acid etch with seven to one, that's seven parts water to one part muriatic acid to etch the rebar. Um, you know, I have a sandblaster back from my youthful days of craziness when I worked on cars. So I may actually try and break out the sandblaster, have a go at this. Most people would probably take a wire brush wheel to this. I just like the idea of a sandblaster because I can get behind the nooks and crannies in between here. The sand will actually bounce up and knock some of that rust off if you do it right. And then you're also going to see I'm going to trim these rebar back. I mean, this is literally sticking up above the level of where the concrete goes. It's outrageous. I don't know who did this rebar work. So the next few scenes, that's what you're going to see. I'm going to de-rust with my sandblaster, trim the rebars back. And then after that, it's time to paint it up, get it all pretty and waterproof. So I figured before I started up the sandblaster, I would get the uh, big chunks of concrete removed from it first. So I'm gonna do that real quick, just to make sure the sand is actually able to hit the metal rather than being blocked by the cement adhered to the metal. Oh my God, I'd forgotten how messy sandblasting was. So given that I just sandblasted this and took a grinder brush wheel to it, I gotta say the, the grinder brush wheel is the way to go, guys. Don't, don't copy that sandblaster idea. That was unnecessary. Uh, came out nice and clean though. I'm pretty pleased with how much rust came off there. I got most of the cement off the top. I don't, I, I got around back of the smaller rebar. I don't feel like going in deep enough to get around the back of those. Uh, the concrete seems pretty nicely adherent to the bottom also, so I'm not sure it's necessary. I think what happened is the superficial rust on the bigger size rebar blistered up and lifted the cement above it off. But again, I'm walling off my porch, uh, so hopefully the amount of moisture that these are exposed to goes way down. 
Um, I think I'm going to do all three, brush, wheel, sandblast, and acid etch, just to make darn sure I got these as clean as possible, because like with most things in life, prep work is 90% of the battle. So I'm going to do a 7 to 1, that's water to muriatic acid. I'm going to apply that with a brush uh, to etch this out, and then I'm going to call it good as far as prep work. Always remember, so this is muriatic acid, that's water. So it's 7 to 1. Always add acid to water in case it goes exothermic like crazy and splashes back on you. You want the water splashing, not the acid. This is just a cheapo disposable paintbrush from the orange store. Be mindful not to get it on your hands. This will burn. play with the chemistry set here. We're just going to rinse it with water to dilute the heck out of it. All right. So this is just some basic Rust-Oleum oil-based enamel. They make a specialty product for painting rebar. I did not go that route because it was hard to get and take a couple days to ship. And this is pretty good stuff. It's worth keeping in mind as you do this that the goal is to paint only the steel rebar. You really want to avoid getting paint on the concrete because you want the old etched concrete to bind to the new concrete without a layer of paint in between the two. All right, can says 24 hour dry time. I don't cheat on rules like that. You pay the price if you do. So we'll see you in 24 hours. And it's been 24 hours. So in this scene, you're going to see me paint on a product called Concrete Bonding Adhesive. This particular product happens to be made by Quickcrete. That's what that bottle is. Uh, so I, hear, I read that it's basically Elmer's glue. You just paint this onto the old etched concrete. And this is formulated to really help bind the new fresh concrete to the old concrete. So you don't want to skip this step. And this is why we were so careful painting that we didn't get paint all over the concrete. And here you get to see my amateur troweling skills. Man, look at me go. You know, this isn't in time lapse. I actually move that fast in real life. In fact, all of my videos that I make are really this fast usually. So while we're here, would you please take the time to subscribe to my channel? Because uh, then you get to see all sorts of helpful content like this on different projects. And then click that thumbs up button too, would you? I'm not pandering, you're pandering. So here we are about a week later. Doesn't look too bad. Blended in fairly nicely, a little rougher. But that sound is so much better than just the loose, cracked up concrete that was there before. Way superior, so I'm pretty pleased. And just to kind of call back to the root cause of that, there were rebar exposed on the tips, which led to the rust. And I had rain that was driving in for years and years, so I went and built this awning. So if y'all are interested in seeing how I did that, please check out my channel, Suburban Biology. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Bye.